How you doing everybody? It's, uh, it's Wednesday the 30th of June and uh, it's in the middle of the afternoon and I wanted to touch on something that uh, cropped up on Friday. I happen to be in Belfast which is up in the north of Ireland. It's a sort of a pseudo -industri supposedly pseudo-industrial city up there and uh, I was heading home and I went into a cafe to get something to eat little cafe restaurant place in the middle of the town and I overheard four people talking and uh, there were three men and a woman they were in their 30s and they seemed professional types by their sort of manner and their dress and everything else one of them was quite uh, he seemed quite a knowledgeable sort sort give me the impression he was an engineer or something I don't know I don't know I don't know who they were but they were talking about an extraordinary thing they were talking about uh, what was happening in America with this BP rig and about the fallout from it and what was going on and everything. And uh, I was on my own, just beside them. So I was just sort of listening to their conversation briefly. It lasted about five or ten minutes and then they moved on. But uh, I thought it was fascinating because it is a subject that I had never heard before. I want to say I had never heard it before. I did read about it years ago, but I kind of dismissed it. I thought it was a sort of a crackpot notion because the article that I read was in one of these uh, type of National Geographic or something like It wasn't a National Geographic, but it was a, a magazine like that. And it kind of put forward that this was a mad notion. But of course, it would be a mad notion because the Russians come up with it. All right. Now, I don't think they originally come up with it, but uh, they come up with the development of it. And this conversation was going on with these three men and this woman was as follows. That what was happening was the BP oil rig uh, fiasco was as a result of a catch-up, an attempted catch-up by BP. And seemingly what has happened is all throughout Russia, especially around the Caspian, the Caspian Sea area, and into uh, over in eastern Russia, Siberia, they have drilled several hundred of what are called deep bore wells. And these are oil wells that go down below 30,000 feet. Uh, I think a lot of these wells have gone down to 45,000 and 50,000 feet. And uh, the whole concept is based on a concept called abiotic oil and what it does is it kind of flies in the face of what our understanding in the West is about oil and about how it's produced it's the old story once there's money involved in something and once there's a dollar sign involved in it and once there's these mad professors the new you know the new religion once there's science involved in it it's all up the left it's all balls. It's, most of it is balls. All right. Uh, but once there's money involved, once it's a, there's a commodity and there's money, then out of it comes propaganda, political propaganda. So seemingly what happened was anyway, I think 12 years ago, the Russians decided that they'd had enough about all this uh, peak oil nonsense that's coming out of the West. And what they did was uh, obviously the, the the Iron Court was down, etc. So they could get involved with themselves, raising money because they had large amounts of gas and oil. And they raised a clatter of money and they did a lot of development of these deep bore oil wells. And the idea being that the the, the essential theory behind it seems to be that uh, from what I can, I, I put a couple of links to these, this stuff. Look, look, I'm not an engineer or a geologist, and everybody are e email me and they you're wrong. And all. Look, I, I'm just talking about from a layman's point of view. All right, about this. It seems that the oil is not just under the ground, like you find in Texas or like you find in Saudi Arabia or whatever. It's there, but there are only reservoirs. It's not created there. It's created deep, deep down in the Earth's mantle. 30, 40, 50,000 feet and it percolates up into those reservoirs and it's going on all the time this is an ongoing process just like our atmosphere creates water 
the earth's mantle, the earth's core, the relationship between the core and the mantle creates this oil. It's a chemical thing, not necessarily a biological thing at all. So they were basically saying, this group of people was, that the reason the BP were down in this particular drilling out this particular well was because it's one of the few places, apart from the mainland, I believe it's on the mainland also, of North America. But they got a license, they got a very, very easy license to drill in the Gulf of Mexico. And this was their response. Similarly, the Russians have about 200 of these wells and they have a lot of them capped off and they, the Russians claim they have enough oil and enough gas, have enough oil and enough natural gas for the next 300 years. For themselves anyway. I don't know about the rest of Western Europe. I suppose they would have. If they keep drilling this stuff, they probably will. But anyway, that's the story. And there's a lot of inherent difficulties involved in it. And the Russians would never ever drill for it in water. It was always dry land they drilled on because they had problems. And uh, obviously they've been able to deal with the problems. But I don't want to go on about this. I just want to say... The, the, these these people were talking about the fact that the BP, uh, this was the West sort of BP response to what had been going on in Russia. And it was an attempt to sort of match what the Russians were doing, but in a high-tech manner. Because seemingly from what these people were saying, the Russians did it in a quite a basic sort of thing. It was very, very simple. It was always on dry land. They drilled down, drilled, kept drilling, drilling, drilling and eventually they came across oil, right? Sometimes they came across oil and gas, sometimes they came across all the things, but the proof that Putin was in the eating, they basically experimented with about between, a hundred, I think it was 180 and 200 of these oil wells, and the vast bulk of them had come up, thumbs up. So they had, at the present, they have, in the earth, have access to basically a, a colossal amount of oil, a colossal amount of oil. It's called abiotic oil. Now, I don't hear anybody talking about this, but then that doesn't surprise me, as I say. Once you have oil, a commodity, and you must remember what, what essentially it is, it's the substitute for gold and silver. It's what really, really, what the whole world currencies are all pinned against. And all of a sudden, a crowd up in Russia are world leaders in this technology. Of course, there's going to be a big rush, to, a big rush by the Western companies to try and balance it out and, and, and whatever, try and match it. So that's what they were saying. Uh, I, I think it's just interesting. It's the old story. No matter what the commodity is, no matter what the thing is, once there's a dollar sign in front of it, once there's a currency sign in front of it, and people can make profit and money, everybody's there to be bought. All the university professors, all the whiz kids, all the scientists, all the technicians, everybody's there to be bought. And out of that comes propaganda. And that's what we're falling on now. Only problem is, God help the people on the on the deep eastern seaboard of the United States and down in that Gulf of Mexico and Cuba and all those blooming uh, states down there and what's going to face them. This, this is unbelievable stuff we're heading into. Crazy stuff. Anyway, listen, we talk more. Don't forget abiotic oil.